Hello everybody. Welcome once again to my FE preparation series. This video will cover my test plan, really your test plan and what I would suggest that you do in order to create a good one so that you can pass the test the first time. I'm going to cover here some of the things that I've done and that I found most effective. Hopefully you'll get something that you'll find useful out of this. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. It would really help us grow this channel and provide more of this content to you in the future. Now for an effective study technique. This is the current agenda as it stands today. I've covered five parts. It has taken me nine videos to do so. First thing you need to do is identify what to study. Now, I've talked about this before. You need to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Now, you can use a lot of different inputs to that. Obviously, your educational experiences, you know what you're good at from school. Hopefully, you know that you're good at math because the FE exam has a lot on it. You may also find sample tests, some that you've already taken and some that you plan on taking. And I do suggest that you buy the one that NCES provides because I found it to be a very good one, at least for the electrical and computer tests that I took. I also suggest that you do a first trial run through the PPI manual. That should obviously be for the test you plan on sitting for, but what I'm suggesting here is it'll help you refine what your guesstimate is on where your strengths and weaknesses are. And it is just a guesstimate, let's be honest. As you go through the program and you try the material more and more, you'll find exactly what you're good and not so good at. Now, identifying what to study, I would say you need to spend your time on what is important. Now, the time that you should spend are the things that you have your strengths in. That's where a lot of your time should go. Maybe not the majority, but a large chunk of it. Obviously, those are things that you know you're good at. And you may just have to refine it and pick up the speed in terms of solving sample problems with that material. The big chunk is going to be the middle ground. Those areas that you believe you can be successful at, but maybe they're not the things that you were necessarily super at, but you know you can do if given the time to study and prepare for it. As per the previous descriptions that I've given, that is the B level material that deserves your attention and deserves your investment in time. Now finally, you're going to have those subjects that you know you're not good at. And those areas, obviously, you do want to review them because you could actually solve a simple question related to one of them on the test, but you do not want to spend a lot of time here, let's be honest. A lot of that will be more sacrificial in nature when it comes to the act actually taking the test and you're put under that 2.909 minute time period per question. The ABC calculator, as I mentioned earlier, is a great tool for helping you categorize the material that you're good at, you may need to refine a little bit more, and that that not so good at. And it allows you to classify those strengths and weaknesses in a nice uniform method. That was a program created by Joel Irway in the 30 minute EIT. Although I don't see much online from him lately about it, he still sells that program through Amazon in terms of an online book. So I do suggest you spend the money, things like 10 bucks and do it. On the screen now is my ABC calculator following Joel Irway's program, the 30 minute EIT. As you can see, it's a spreadsheet and it's organized in a way that each of the major topics for the particular FE exam that I took, which was the electrical and computer, are defined and you got a minimum number of questions and a maximum number of questions assigned to each. That is replicated from the actual NCEES test descriptions, which tell you those ranges. The way this program works is you have the A, B, and C. So in the A column is where you put the things that you know you're pretty good at or very good at. And all you need to do is maybe refresh yourself on that material. In the B column are the things that hey, you're not necessarily good at them, but you know that given enough time, you can get yourself at least functional in those areas. So they become the B category. And then of course the C, which is the low end, the ones that are almost going to be, in my case, some of it was sacrificial in nature during the test, I needed the time rather than wasting it on some of these questions. The material that you don't think you're going to ever get that good at, but you still should review it and invest some time in it. And right below that are the percentages of the time based upon the ones that I selected, because these I filled in. 
I filled in my mathematics, digital systems, so forth and so on, as my A's, and then the power electronics and circuit analysis as the B's, and of course the engineering sciences and control systems as the actual C category, based upon the ones I selected here, which are done by little drop-down menus that I get to choose from, that the spreadsheet provides, it then tells me what percentage of my test will be that. For example, in the A category, it'll be 35.5%. In the B category, 40%. In the C category, 23.5%. Now, I had to juggle these around a little bit to get this to work because when it did the sums down at the bottom, because it assigns a certain, what they consider an achievement level that's expected from the A, Bs, and Cs from most people, it came out with 60% on the ones that I chose. That was not necessarily the ones I first put in here. I had to play around with it and move stuff around. In particular, I had one in the A that had to go to the B, and one in the B that had to go to the C, and I think I actually had one in the B that had to go to back to the A again, another one. And, uh, and when I, it was all said and done after I juggled it around, being more realistic, I believe, then it came out with the 60% um, level, and that was flagged as success by the spreadsheet. Once you've made that determination, now you should gather your study material. As I mentioned in previous lessons of this sequence, I strongly suggest that you obtain a copy of the PPI study guide for the test you plan on taking. Quite expensive, it's going to cost you anywhere between $100, $200, depending on what your discipline is, but it's well worth it. You can buy them directly from PPI. There's seven of them now. There's seven different FE exams at this point. It looks like they added a new one, Industrial, which they didn't have before. I believe that's the one. You can go to the website, ppi2pass.com, and you'll see them all of the material they offer. Study guides primarily, but they also have sample tests for many of these as well. And I suggest you get both. Or you can buy them through Amazon or some other source. It doesn't really matter. Down in the notes section of this video, you'll see the references to the actual material. I won't have links to anything in particular. I don't want to imply that I'm making any money from any of this. I'm doing this you know, just to provide a reference to my viewers. I would also make sure that you download the latest FE reference handbook. Now that's a free handbook provided by NCEES at their website www.ncees.org. I just checked this morning and version 9.5 is still the latest version being offered. Go there. I think you have to register to the NCES website, which you're going to have to do anyway if you're going to take the test. And then you're able to download that book for free. You need to decide or determine how much of your time you want to use to prepare. Now what I've given here is a hypothetical. And this is real because it's very possible that you've just started school again in your senior year and it's September 2nd, a couple of weeks from now. And you want to take the FE exam during the break in the holidays, December 28th, between uh, the two major holidays. I actually took mine on that date, but it had nothing to do with me going to school. It had to do that was the best time I could get. Now, if you calculate it out, there are 117 days between those two dates for you to study, if that's what you're deciding to do. And if you wish to take one day a week for rest, like I did, that will reduce your number to 101. If, however, you choose to take two days off per week, i.e. entire weekends, which some people do, that will bring that down to a mere 85 days. And don't forget, you have to account for today and you have to account for not doing anything the day before that test, as I mentioned earlier in this program. Relax, clear your mind. Now, how many days do you have for studying? Think about that. And once you've decided that it's indeed what you want to do, use that as the study plan starting point. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you should take a first pass through the study guide. This first pass doesn't have to be extensive. Uh, I decided to go through all the material in the PPI study guide, sort of an initial evaluation or trial pass, and I learned a lot by doing that. First of all, I made sure I did not take any of the evaluation tests that they have at the beginning and the end of each of the section categories, the knowledge areas, that is. I did not hide the answers to the in-subject problem that you'll encounter as you're covering the material in the actual subject, but I read through each of the solutions that PPI did to make sure I understood how they did it. Now what this enabled me to do was to validate my initial assumptions, which were close but not perfect. 
and I was able to adjust them after doing this. I also decided on a more effective order on how to arrange the subjects within my study plan, so I shifted things around a little bit after doing that. There are alternative methods. There are many, many alternative methods, actually. I'm showing two of them here. Alternative method number one is what PPI actually suggests. You go through each knowledge area only after attempting the quiz or the evaluation test that they give at the beginning of each knowledge area. The alternative number two, which is a more aggressive one, would be only complete the quizzes themselves at the beginning of each knowledge area and then go and try to test and see how you'll do. Now, obviously, that means you're going to have to spend some time, even after doing those quizzes, to maybe go back and cover some of the areas that you obviously did not fully understand. The bottom line is that I highly recommend this first initial trial pass to give you a baseline and to help you validate your strengths and weaknesses. However, you should limit your time investment for completing this first pass, really. No more than about 15% of your total time because you're going to need the time to do some more focused study. Now, create the study plan. Once you have completed categorizing where you're spending your study time would be optimal, it's time to get a plan down on paper or more likely a spreadsheet or a Microsoft Word table. I use the spreadsheet easier to work with for this particular type of material. I found that laying out my plan per the chapters in the PPI manual was extremely effective. I also assigned colors, green, yellow, and red. Pardon my yellow, it's more like brown. To each of the PPI subjects, then I sorted them by those colors, which is easy to do with a spreadsheet. On the screen right now is actually my first draft study plan. And I included all of the topics, the knowledge areas, followed by the subjects within each of those knowledge areas per the PPI manual. I assigned colors to those based upon my strengths and weaknesses that I determined both in my uh, previous experience, my educational experience, and going through that dry run pass, and I assigned the colors. Green being those that I wanted in category A, yellow, category B, which required some work, and C, the pink. And uh, I even shuff shuffled stuff that was normally in the second grouping into the third grouping and vice versa. So I indicated some of that on my initial plan. As I mentioned, I did the initial trial pass by the way, it took me 20 days to complete that initial pass through the PPI manual. I determined that I should spend a total of 138 days studying from that point to the day prior to my desired test date. That allowed for a single day off each week on Sunday, which is what I chose. And that date floated a little bit, depending on other events going on in that particular week. For example, if there was a holiday that uh, I needed to attend family events, like Thanksgiving, I would make sure that that became my day off rather than Sunday of that week. As soon as I had that all worked out, I then immediately registered for the test. Now, it can be changed, but it would cost a little bit of money. So this gave me focus, a deadline that I had to shoot for, and I didn't have to change it, just to let everybody know. I did not reschedule this. I did not push it back further. I did that when I was working on my MBA early on and I took the GMAT test. I did reschedule it at one point when I realized I needed a little more time to study, but I didn't do it with this one. And this enabled me to go through all the PPI subjects, that is the 138 days, at least once. I spent a second pass on only those material highlighted in green and yellow. So the first pass I did all three, green, yellow, red, with basically every section. Second pass, I did only green and yellow. And then on the final pass, I did only the green. And what you see on the screen here right now is the final result of that with three more columns added to my study plan. So the first column shows what the first pass, everything is available to me. You see the slashes? That's because I put dates in those little boxes and I put in the month and a day that I completed. And then on the second pass, notice that I stop short and I gray out all of the pink. And then on the third pass, I gray out both the tests because by that point I've been through the test twice. There was no point in me trying it a third time. It wouldn't have benefited me. I didn't want to waste days on that or even a half a day even. And I also grayed out all of the C's and the B's, the yellows and the pinks. And this is the plan I stuck to. And this is the plan that got me to passing the FE exam on my first attempt. 
honestly. Now, how did I overall use this study plan? Well, first of all, PPI suggests that using, a study, using their study guide, an individual should endeavor to spend a single study day on each subject. Well, if you're like me, that didn't quite work out. There were some subjects that definitely took more than one day. Matter of fact, one su a lot of, two or three subjects took three days, and one subject took four days. That's okay. I made that up because then there were other subjects that took less than a half a day, and I was able to bunch them together, two in one day, for example, and I uh, even got a three in one day once. Basically, what this told me was, you, and what I want to tell you, is try and be flexible with how long you spend on any one subject. As I indicated, whenever I found that I had a half a day left, or more in some cases, I didn't take that extra time off. I went ahead and found another topic that I could cover, another subject, and I was able to fill it in. And I would try to get another one in before the end of that day. Didn't always work, but it did work more than once for me. And then on my next pass through the material, the second and then third pass, I was able to make some adjustments. Now, I didn't bother reprinting the whole study plan, but I would skip and not complete. And, and you would tell that I skipped it because there was no completion date. So I would get, jump ahead, find something, complete that, and then come back up to it and do it later. That happened a lot in my second pass. Now, in my third pass, I found that by then I had gone through the material quite a bit. So it was, uh, some subjects are very easy to go through very quickly. And others, I decided to not spend so much time on. Even though I could have, I didn't want to waste that time because it was borderline being a C-type subject at that point. And as I indicated, as I found along the way, as I found that through each pass through, overall, I found that my time to complete each subject was significantly reduced. I got faster and faster, which sort of makes sense. Now, how long should you study each day? Well, this is an age-old question. I suggest you allocate one or two study time blocks each study day, depending on how life is for you at this point. I believe a study block should be between two and five hours. If you've allowed for two days off in the weeks, then I suggest you bump that up to six to s about five or six hours, really. However, breaking it up into two blocks or even more Put you at risk for the completing what you were hoping to do that day. Uh, it happened to me at least once where I wound up not going for the second block. So I had bounced back and forth between one study block and two study blocks and I found that sticking to one uh, about the midway point was the best way to go. I also found that on Saturdays, the day before my day off, I was able to really put a lot of time in. I was able to get like two different blocks of three to four hours in, averaging three and a half hours or seven hours for the day. Saturday was a productive day for me through most of my study period. That may be for you, or it may be a different day. You never know. And finally, I say right now, stop what you're doing and create the draft of your study plan today. One or two more YouTube videos will not be as valuable, in my opinion, as creating that plan. Unless, of course, the videos you are thinking of looking at are ones I made after this one, videos from me, then go right ahead, uh, watch those videos. I'm just kidding, of course. Making the plan is still more important. However, you may be one of that 1% of the straight A's in engineering school, and I met a couple of those, that can just go sit for the FE exam tomorrow and pass it. However, since you're watching this video, I would tend to doubt that you're one of those. So I suggest you go study right now. That completes uh, part six of my FE prep program. And I'll be issuing part seven probably in another week or two. Please make sure you look out for that. And uh, if you've gotten something out of this, whether it's educational or just entertainment or whatever, it would really help if you subscribe to my channel. Just click on the little head that's going to appear here and follow along, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, and you won't be bothered by YouTube unless you further ask to be notified. And I'm not asking you to do that. I need you to subscribe, though, and I'd really appreciate it. Thank you, and until the next video.